Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a CCNA and CSENT video practice exam for you today, addressing, routing, and hex fundamentals. And if you think that's a lot to cover in four questions, you're right, but I'm going to have those on the screen for you in about 10 seconds. And then we're going to see the answers in action on live Cisco routers. So let's head to those questions today. Question one, what happens if you attempt to assign an address from the 127.000/8 network to a Cisco router loopback interface. Question two, what is the network mask for the class B reserved addresses expressed in both dotted decimal and prefix notation? Question three, of OSPF, RIP version one, RIP version two, and EIGRP, in which is the auto summarization of routes at major network boundaries an issue? And after that wordy question, here's question four, express the decimal 66 in hex. Just that simple. If you want to pause the video here and think about your answers, that's a great idea. A quick word here about my CCNA video boot camp. Thank you so much for the fantastic response to this. As you can see, we've got over 1,600 people in this course right now. Uh, sorry about the URL here at CCNA On Demand Video Boot Camp with those dreaded dashes in the middle, but this will make it worth your while. If you click redeem it and put in Bulldog 60, and click apply, you get the full course for $44. No kidding, it is a fantastic value. Be sure to check that out. Also my full list of courses at udemy.com slash u slash Chris Bryant. Plenty of free courses in there as well and every paid course has either a discount, an hour of free viewing or both. So make sure to check that list out. And let's head back to these questions. I'm gonna call up a live router here in just a moment because you look at this question and you think, well, if you know the 127 network is reserved for loopbacks, then you might say, well, you know, that's perfectly fine. So let's go on a live Cisco router and check that out. We'll just create uh, loopback 33. Get an IP address of 127.33.33.33. And the router is going to tell you it's not a valid host address. And you might think, well, maybe I just typed something in wrong, so I'll try all 22s and a different mask. And it's going to come back with that every single time because the reserve loopback range does not mean reserved for Cisco router loopbacks. Okay, that's a very important point. That's for a lot of other kinds of loopbacks. You can go to some RFCs and see the list, but you can't take an address from that reserved range and put it on a loopback interface. Now, what is the network mask for the Class B reserved addresses? In dotted decimal, that's going to be 255, 240, 00, and prefix notation is simply slash 12. And if you're not used to prefix notation, it's just a number behind the slash indicating the number of consecutive ones at the beginning of the mask. It's a lot easier than continually writing and saying 255, 255, 255, 0. It gets a little old, I admit. Now, of these four protocols, OSPF, RIP version 1, RIP version 2, and EIGRP, uh, where do you have to concern yourself with auto summarization of routes at major network boundaries? You have to do that with RIP version 2 and with EIGRP, and you'll see this command so often. Let's just go under router rip, and you'll see no auto summary so often that you think it's a required command, but it's not. And you really want to watch that when you're checking configs on your exam, job interview, production network, lab, wherever, because it's really easy to look at just auto summary in the config and your, you, your mind says, oh, no auto summary, because you're just so used to seeing it that way. If you are not seeing the subnets that you expect to see in a RIP version 2 or EIGRP config, that is the first thing I would check, make sure that auto summarization has been disabled. Finally, expressing the decimal 66 in hex, we know this is lower than 256, so what we're looking at is how many units of 16 we have and how many units of 1 we have. Well, how many 16s are in 66? Four of them, right? 4 times 16, and that gives us 64, so the first number would be 4, 4 units of 16, and that leaves 2 remaining, which means that we have 2, so the hex value expressing that decimal will be 42. It's four units of 16, which is 64, and then two units of one, which is two. You add them up, and it's 66. Uh, I'm taping this in early November 2012, and I'm going to have a free hex book out on Amazon, a lot of other ebook sites, 
and also a free course on that on Udemy to celebrate the launch of our new website, which is coming up very shortly. So make sure to watch out for that ad on Udemy as well. And thanks as always for making TBA part of your CCNA and CSENT success story.